Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Obviously, so far this year, Call of Duty has seen its ups and downs. The launch of MW2 was insane. It shattered records left, right, and center. The hype for it was unreal. Obviously, though, in the time since, that hype has fallen off a cliff. There have been a plethora of bugs and issues and glitches and other turnoffs for Warzone 2, MW2, and DMZ. And in that time, we've seen several other things, you know, rise in the gaming scene. Most recently, a game by the name of X Defiant. I'm sure you've heard about it in the past couple of days. It's really taken off in popularity. And a lot of people are calling this the Call of Duty killer. And I've got my opinions on that. I'll share my two cents here in a bit. But really, I want to talk about how X Defiant as a game and things similar to it are what Call of Duty needs the most, which might sound weird at first, but by the end of this video, I'm sure you'll understand. Uh, the first things first though here, what exactly is X Defiant? Because that's the footage that you guys are watching in the background right now. X Defiant is in its closed beta. There's been a lot of opportunities to gain access codes over the past couple of days, whether it's via Twitch drops or their uh, like thousand use codes or whatever the case may be. A lot of players have gotten access to this recently, but this is going to be ultimately a free to play first person an arena shooter developed by Ubisoft and Mark Rubin who actually previously worked on several different Call of Duty IPs is sort of the director there and right away even before I started getting my hands on X Defiant for myself I noticed that Mark Rubin has been flooding my Twitter timeline with transparency and that is something that stands out to me a lot that is a obvious uh you know call out when it comes to Call of Duty titles and the Call of Duty community People want transparency from Activision and from the dev studios, and we get it from time to time. But just in the past week alone, I've seen more tweets from Mark Rubin in regards to things that they're updating, things that they're looking into. Uh, Aches, former Call of Duty Pro, also a developer on the game. I've seen him on the timeline as well. They are going crazy with listening to community feedback and responding to it, not necessarily always making changes because of it, more so explaining why they have certain design decisions and why things are the way that they are. But the amount of interaction and the amount of transparency that I've seen out of those two Twitter accounts in the last week is more than I've seen from Call of Duty in a long, long time combined, right? So initially, that's something that stood out to me. Now, yes, the game is in its closed beta. They're trying to promote it. They're trying to hype it up. So they are going to be very active because it's going to get people just like me talking about the game. But hands on with X Defiant. Quite frankly, I was impressed. Before we talk more Call of Duty with it, the gameplay in and of itself is Call of Duty-esque. It's not a one-to-one -one copy. It's definitely not Call of Duty, but for a first-person shooter, it's got that arcade feel that you would have, uh, you know, been very familiar with had you played several recent Call of Duties, not necessarily MW2, because quite frankly, the way that these two games play versus one another is very different. MW2, faster TTK, more tactical, uh, you know, maneuvering is not nearly as smooth or as fluid. X Defiant, bit of a longer TTK, Movement is kind of crazy in this game. Uh, very arcadey feeling though. You know, I'd compare it to almost Black Ops 4 because it has like specialist type abilities with certain playable characters and whatnot. Kind of cool that it actually takes, uh, you know, characters from other Ubisoft games too. Just a neat little touch there. But it's got that. But then it also still has like the feel of, uh, you know, a first person shooter, an aggressive arcadey one, similar to what you might see in like Black Ops 2, MW2, 2009, MW3, very much so a mashup feel of that stuff there, while still being unique enough that it's, like I said, not a one-to-one -one of Call of Duty. And being that it's a closed beta, there are certain things that stand out. There is a level of clunkiness to the gameplay, even though it does feel very smooth in comparison to Call of Duty, that make it, uh, you know, have, have room for improvement, I guess you could say. Still fun, but noticeably not perfected, right? And I'm sure that'll improve over time. Gunplay and gun customization, very similar to that of Call of Duty. You can pick your loadout with a primary, a secondary, a grenade. You can go through and customize things with various attachments. Something that stood out to me right away was when I was building my uh, weapons in this game. Instantly available for me to see, clear as day, defined weapon stats, in-depth weapon stats. Not some stupid little silly bar that in the end means absolutely nothing in terms of how much green is showing or how much red is showing like in our Call of Duty menus. So. Really, really cool stuff coming out of the closed beta, and I'm sure it's going to improve and improve over time. So I'm very much so looking forward to seeing the end product and the full release whenever that does end up happening. Now, moving beyond the core of what X Defiant is, why is it so good for Call of Duty? You might be asking, since that's kind of the whole premise of this video. Well, quite frankly, it's very simple. It's the competition. Call of Duty 
needs competition. And this year, I thought we really were going to get it. You know, you go into launch of MW2 and Warzone 2 this year, and you're saying, man, this is going to be a crazy year for FPS. We've got a Battlefield game dropping in 2042. We've got a Halo game dropping. We've got a game from Call of Duty titled MW2 dropping. It's like we're back in 2009, right? Well, not so much. All the games from back then, some of the most, uh, you know, iconic games of their time, all three of these games fell off heavy, right? You know, Battlefield 2042 launched and it was one of the biggest messes I've seen in recent memory, right? Uh, Warzone 2 MW2 dropped. The numbers were insane at first and then they fell off a cliff because of how the game felt, how it played, how stable it was, how long it took for certain things to be fixed. The playability just wasn't there to begin with, with crashes and server issues and stuff like that. Halo did uh, the Halo stuff, I guess. I don't know. I feel like that game was relevant for like a week. Uh, anyways, there was a ton of competition this year, but all of it fell so short that Call of Duty really didn't have to do much, uh, you know, to actually float there and stay at the top of the surface, I guess is a way to put it. Uh, they really didn't have to try hard to maintain an active player base. And despite the fact that MW2 and Warzone 2's player base has, like I said, fallen off drastically since launch, it's still Call of Duty. It's still a titan in the FPS genre, and it's still the biggest FPS game in the world. And that's not going to change for a long, long, long time. That said, as I mentioned at the start of the video, everyone's been referring to X Defiant as the Call of Duty killer. Personally, I think that's a bit of a uh, an over-exaggeration. In my opinion, the only thing that's going to kill Call of Duty is going to be Call of Duty. They're going to run out of fresh ideas. They're going to run out of innovation. They're going to run out of uh, chances to say, hey, this is going to be the year where we turn things around and players are slowly going to say, all right, that's enough. Or Call of Duty is going to just release the Call of Duty. It'll be the last one and it's going to be a mashup of a bunch of different Call of Duty studios and gaming uh, you know, elements together and gameplay features together, right? Like I said, I think that'll be the Call of Duty killer, the game itself, not another title. But what is so good about seeing titles like X Defiant sort of rise to the top so quickly is that it gets people talking. You look on your Twitch channel and your following list, you look on your YouTube sub box, you're going to see a ton of mainstream COD creators focusing on X Defiant right now. Uh, obviously, myself included here, right? Uh, it's going to get people's attention. You see these big creators playing this new game and saying it's really fun compared to Call of Duty when Call of Duty's in a bad state. That's going to draw players away from Call of Duty, albeit temporarily because this is a closed beta, but you know, come full launch, it could be a very different story, but it's going to pull people away from Call of Duty and get people off of that game and on a different, similar game. Same genre, same sort of demographic, same target audience, FPS arcade shooter, regardless of how arcadey or not MW2 feels in its current state. You know, this applies to future COD titles as well. And it doesn't always have to be X Defiant. That's what it is right now. It's the hot game at the moment. It'll probably be the hot game when it drops based off the hype from the betas so far. But maybe a different title comes up in the future. Maybe it's another Battlefield or another Halo, or maybe it's something different like X Defiant. Call of Duty needs the competition because that is the only thing that is going to get them to innovate. When players start leaving their game for other games that are being more transparent, more active in catering towards their largest player base and their active player base and their dedicated uh, you know, audience, that's what's going to make Call of Duty say, all right, we have to step it up here. We have to meet our competitors at their level of transparency, at their level of catering to whatever demographic it may be. And X Defiant right now is doing a very good job of creating a game that's not Call of Duty for Call of Duty fans, for arcade shooter fans, for FPS fans, they're kind of knocking it out of the park, in all honesty. I really enjoyed my time on the game. It definitely felt like a beta in certain regards, but I was able to jump in. It felt very familiar right away, and in the few matches that I played, I really did have a fun time. Can't say the same for Warzone 2 and MW2 as of late. It feels like a chore sometimes, which, you know, it just is what it is. Depends on the update and how stable things are for that update, right? But this competition is the best possible thing that could happen, especially right now where Call of Duty is in such a weird state, in such a down state. Uh, it's in need of a self-revive, if you will. And seeing more competition like this arise could really help turn things around. Maybe not so much in the short term because obviously MW2 is well into its life cycle. We've got that new COD, whatever it's going to be, the MW2 expansion dropping in the fall. But as we push more towards that, as we push towards Call of Duty 2024, we see competitors like Ubisoft with X Defiant and whatnot surface and gain a lot of traction. 
hopefully in the end, that means it's good for everybody. It's especially good for the players and the consumers. The more competition there is, the more innovation there is, the more dedication there is. It doesn't become monotonous for the developers, which is really where Call of Duty feels like it's at right now. We're sort of at this plateau with Call of Duty where the devs and the Activision heads know that they only have to do so much in any given year to get people to buy the game at launch and to come back because it's titled Call of Duty. The name for itself is what carries the franchise, right? People know Call of Duty, they're familiar with it, and they don't really have to innovate or go crazy uh, with a new title because of that. And that's why you get these sort of stale feeling games, the recycled content stuff, because they just don't have any competition. No one can top them. And so they don't have to work that hard to continue producing the number one selling game year after year after year for FPS. Hopefully X Defiant can sort of help with that and spark that innovation, if you will, spark the want to one up somebody else in the same genre and in the same scene, a mainstream competitor. That said, that's going to wrap things up for this one pretty much. If you guys enjoyed the video, a bit of a different style of video compared to the usual Call of Duty content, let me know by dropping a like on it. It would be really appreciated. It's a great way to gauge if you guys want to see more different style content like this. And of course, if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications, and join us ultimately on the road to 1 million subscribers. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.